Some guys asked me, how do you test these Chrysler outboard optical electronic distributors to see if they're okay and if they're driving the box properly, basically to figure out, you know, where the problem is that they're having. So today I'm going to go into it in quite a bit more detail. And conveniently, I had the ignition box off of uh, one of my motors, so I laid it out here on the bench, and this is going to make it a lot easier to explain than if it's up on the side of the motor, and I'm trying to do it there. Okay, these distributors are made by Motorola and the box. Um, they have nothing in common with Chrysler automotive distributors, nothing whatsoever. You know, they make those themselves, and the outboard division went to Motorola for, you know, a quite a lower number of distributors and in this special configuration. Now, a dead giveaway that this is the electronic one is it has two terminals. Um, the bluish, that's supposed to be blue, uh, terminal goes to the, the key-switched battery and this terminal is the output that goes to the, the box line. If it's the stock box, it's the white with the black stripe. Now, if you have a distributor that has one bolt and it's points, and it's driving one of these boxes, that's not a mistake. They actually came that way early on. I can't tell you exactly when they changed over to where it was all optical. I don't know for sure. But... Don't fret because the optical or the points distributor will both drive the stock Motorola box and they'll also both drive an MSD box too if you're thinking about doing that conversion. Some things to note though. This distributor, the optical distributor, will not run a conventional coil. This output is a low level signal and has nowhere near enough uh, power to uh, run a conventional coil. Um, another thing is, that's weird to these distributors is this rotor does not come off the shaft. You will not get that off of there without breaking it. The, uh, it's, it is permanently molded on the shaft and it goes all the way through the thing. Now you might think not being able to remove the rotor is a big downside. But these things are designed to last a very long time, maybe really the life of the of the motor, tell you the truth. And the distributor caps are the same way. If you flip one up and look in it, you'll see why that those also last a very long time. Um, and one, one other thing I need to warn you about is the spark plug wires you use with this. Because the, uh, because the uh, CD puts out such a high voltage and current, you can't use carbon suppression wires. Um, the thing to use is your standard, standard stranded copper wires. Um, if you absolutely have to have suppression, uh, there are some magnetic suppression wires, and I don't know whether they're really magnetic or not, but they have a fine wire that's wound around a, um, 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 a glass core, and it's, it's like a long resistor, but it is metal, so you can't burn it out. And they're available in 7 millimeter, just like the stock wires, but they're a lot easier to get in 8 millimeter. And I do know some cases where some people have uh, drilled out the caps to 8 millimeter in order to accommodate those wires. But you really don't need the, big, the bigger wires. Um, and I, but I would just stick to the 7 millimeter solid copper core wires just for less hassle. Um, one thing that will drive you absolutely nuts on, on these ignition systems is if this ground wire right here uh, breaks. Sometimes it will break internally and you can't see it. And this constantly flexes when you move the throttle because this changes the advance based on throttle position. And this section is bolted to the engine and there's bearings and grease in here. So the... Uh, the, the uh, current has to follow, would have to follow if this is broken through the bearings and that gets really intermittent and puts a lot of noise on, on the signal and if it's a points distributor it probably won't work at all. And uh, it's, this is a source of all kinds of crazy 
missing and uh, and other issues. So uh, if you have any kind of weirdness at all with the ignition, one thing you check. In fact, when I take my hood off, I sometimes will wiggle this. If you have to replace this, you need to find some fine stranded, maybe silicone insulated uh, wire. It doesn't have to be super big. Uh, um, 18, 16 gauge will will uh, will work fine because even if it's points, it's only carrying three or four amps, and in this case, it's only a few milliamps. Um, Looking in the business end of it here, the big red thing you see is the plastic body of what some people call the amplifier, but it's really the, the pickup. And the actual pickup itself is this black tower sticking out right here. And then behind there, if you can see behind through the slot in the shutter wheel, there's another one of these towers. One side has a diode in it, and the other side has a photosensitive transistor. And, and, and light shines between the two of them. And when the, when the light is shining across there, they're on. And when the shutter wheel blocks it, it's off. And that's simply how it works. Now, don't expect to actually see any light there. I think these things actually are infrared. So the human eyeball uh, won't be able to, uh, to pick it up. Now, let's set this thing up for, for testing. Um, first of all, you just have to imagine that this is bolted to the engine and this is bolted to the engine. And this power supply back here, it's just a sort of a CV power supply type thing, is our stand-in for our battery. You see, I've got a lead in my coil, and it's going over to this spark plug, and that's that's got a jumper lead that's grounded. And you always want to have somewhere for your spark to go, uh, whether it's um, a spark plug or just put a clip lead in here and ground it. If you've got a motor that has one coil per plug, you need to leave those hooked to the plugs or you need to, to put clip leads on all of them and ground them. And the reason being is if there's nowhere for this voltage to jump, the voltage will spike extremely high and actually hurt the insulation inside the coil. And after a little bit of accumulated damage, sometime down the road, could be weeks, could be months, could be years, the coil will fail. And you'll wonder why. And since we're not actually hooked to the motor here, this stuff is all floating, um, I'm going to have to use clip leads to ground everything together much like it would be if it was on the motor so that's from the ground the power supply I'm going to go over here to the casting and uh, then I'm going to just conveniently click on this other clip in this other hole here and I'm going to go over here to this um, grease fitting just because it's easy to clip a clip lead on and uh, now, now we're uh, we're all grounded, and I've already got the red wire, which is the 12 volts battery that stays on all the time. This wire would actually go back to the terminal strip on the other side of the motor, and the blue wire is my um, switch 12 volts that comes all the way back from the dash or the remote control box, and. Uh, I'm just going to clip that on right there. And this, this other end is going to be my uh, switch battery going to my distributor. Now this white wire, for what we're doing right now, I'm just going to leave loose. And that's, that's the tack wire. And on these guys, you get one pulse every time a spark plug fires. So you can put that on a conventional modern tachometer. Um, you don't need anything special and set the tack most all of them have a switch on it set the tack at 4p which is four pulses which is four pulses per crank revolution which is also the same as setting it for an eight cylinder four stroke like an inboard either one will work now we have uh, to hook up our signal wire to the distributor And that's the white with the black stripe. Or if it's an MSD con conversion you're doing, it's just the white wire. All right, and I'm just going to hook my ground right here. And I'm going to turn the, turn the meter on and hook it up. I've got it on uh, DC volts and uh, 20 volts. So the first thing you want to do is to make sure you actually have battery voltage, okay? 
and this would be equivalent to my battery terminal. <gasps> I didn't turn the power supply on. So my battery is dead. So there's my battery voltage. And then if it were on the motor, this terminal would come back all the way from the ignition switch. So we got to make sure the ignition switch is on. And yep, it's on. And now I can hook it on this output terminal. And right at the moment, I don't have anything. Well, that's okay. Now, if you find out you don't have your switch voltage or even, you know, don't have your battery voltage out to the, your motor, you're going to have to do some troubleshooting back from back up the stream from that and figure out which, what you got going on. At least you'll know where the problem is. So now I'm going to uh, turn this guy, um, but if you grounded this now, you shouldn't get any kick from the flywheel. You now it makes it, it'll make it safe. Um, I usually just loosen the, the bolts and flip the belt off because it's really easy to get it lined back up. That's in one of my other videos. And, uh, but you could turn the flywheel if you wanted to, to do this. Um, so you'll notice as I turn it, okay, now it's gone up to battery voltage. And then it goes to zero. And every time you rotate this, it should do that four times. Of course, these digital meters have a hard time keeping up with that. But if you had an analog meter here, you would be seeing it go like this. Um, now, this pickup in this one is really fresh. I know because I made it myself. <laughs> and it goes almost to zero. And it goes, you know, dang near to battery voltage. Now, if you've got an old distributor with an original pickup in it, don't be surprised if it doesn't go all the way to battery voltage or nor all the way to ground to, to zero. That's okay. Uh, my impression is, and there's like no, nothing carved in stone here, but my impression is that, and particularly with the MSD box, if it's somewhere between about a volt or less when it's off and somewhere near the actual battery voltage to maybe a volt, volt below that, that's okay. But there is one failure mode that you have to watch out for and that is the pickup transistors inside the pickup becoming leaky. Uh, in fact, that's what had happened with this one. It got to the point where you'd set set here with it off, and and it wouldn't, you know, it'd wander around a volt, and then after it was on for 10 or 15 minutes, uh, as as it was on longer and longer, uh, the the voltage would drift up, and then the on state, it it wouldn't completely, the transistors wouldn't completely turn off, so the voltage could rise, it would. Uh, it would be leaking, so the, it, this would be drifting down a couple of three volts. So, as you can see, when the top and the, the, the battery voltage in zero starts drifting like this, it starts getting closer and closer to each other. When the, when the pickup is switching, you don't get as much uh, switching range. And that's another failure mode that will drive you crazy. You know, you'll, you'll um, launch the boat, fire it up, pull it over to, to, the, to the dock, um, load up, and take off. And 10 or 15 minutes later, the engine starts running bad and maybe even eventually cutting off. And you might sit for a bit and it will run okay again. Well, before you start tearing into the fuel system and whatnot like that, do this test right here and make sure that that pickup isn't failing. Now, if the pickup is bad, if you've done this and you've determined that it's definitely bad, what do you do? Well, you can replace the pickup. Last time I priced one, it was about 100 bucks. Yeah, wow. Uh, but as far as I know, as of the posting of this video, they're still available. Now, another thing you could do is get on eBay and and get a, a used distributor. And another thing you could do, a third choice you would have, is like I mentioned before, a, this will work with a points distributor. So you could go on eBay, and if you see a points distributor, you could pick that up, a three-cylinder or a four-cylinder one, 
you know, depending on which motor you have. This happens to be a four-cylinder one here. Now, one other quickie thing I want to point out is you, you notice you haven't seen the spark plug spark at all, and I've been turning this slowly. Well, it's a characteristic of this MSD is that it has to be turning fairly quickly, like at, at starter speed, before you get spark. And I believe that's done as a, as a safety thing. So if you're just sitting there barring the motor over, it doesn't spark and, like, you know, knock your teeth out or something like that with the with the handle of the uh, screwdriver you're prying on the flywheel with. But if you if you do this and it isn't sparking, don't jump to any conclusions that anything's wrong. Just go faster. It's okay. Uh, if I recall correctly, the stock box uh, doesn't do that. If it gets a pulse, it sparks. So some of the more astute viewers. <laughs> Uh, probably realized uh, by this point that you can replace a, a bad Motorola box with one of the uh, MSG Street Fires without doing this stealth thing that I did that's covered in that other long video. Um, or you can also upgrade a point system uh, by adding an MSD. Um, Basically, it, it, you, it's, this is what you do, and um, you know if you've done some of this kind of hot roddy stuff before, you'll, you'll pick up on this pretty quick. Uh, is make you an aluminum plate that bolts where right here, where where this 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 guy would normally normally bolt big enough. Uh, leave your room for the MSD probably this way, and make it make it wide enough and long enough that you can you can put a coil on it. Using um, the MSD's um, isolators, vibration isolators, um, when you're using the MSD in its own box is a really good idea because these two strokes tend to buzz at a high frequency and I worry about uh, vibrating the components um, loose in the thing. Uh, this guy right here is nailed in with uh, rubber uh, bumpers around the sides and all that, so I'm not too concerned about this guy. Um, you want to leave the jumpers that the MSD has. It comes set up for an eight cylinder, and this only affects the rev limiter. Uh, leave those jumpers alone because, as I say again, an eight cylinder four stroke is the same as a four cylinder two stroke as far as ignition firing goes. And set, set the uh, rev limiter to maybe 5,500 RPM, which is right above the those motors normal operating range and that's just good to catch it if the prop comes out or it comes out of gear or I don't know the nut flies off the prop or something I don't know you lose you lose it and uh, it just say it'll save the motor something the factory box doesn't do um, and if you you can of course if you're doing a CD system you can reuse the CD coil or MSD and also summit have some little you know, solid block coils about this big. They're like twenty-five or thirty dollars. They're not very expensive at all. But you really want to, you really need to use a coil that's made for a CD. And if you're switching from a point system, you need to you need to dump that coil because if it's a round can coil, you don't want that. And there's a there's a Chrysler version of this coil that doesn't have the ribs right here, and that's for points. You don't want that either. A CD coil is low impedance, and you get the best performance out of them if you use the right coil. Well, I hope this was helpful and. Let us close with the, the wise words of our do-it-yourself prophet, Red Green. If the women don't find you handsome, at least let them find you handy. <laughs>